Por... In this short video, I'm going to talk to you about the 3D coordinate system and work out some examples. Now we need to get some terminology straight. In 2D, we call 2D R2. So we have this stylized R with a superscript 2. Looks like an exponent, not really an exponent. And what that is, is the set of all ordered pairs where both coordinates are real numbers. That's what this fancy notation says here. X belongs to the real numbers and Y belongs to the real numbers. And we call R2 the plane. So those are synonyms, R2 and the plane. When we say that, we know we're talking about 2D. Now in 3D, we call it R3. It's the same R now with a superscript of three. And that's the set of all ordered triples where each coordinate is a real number. And we, re we refer to R3 as space. So we may say we have a line in space or a line in the plane or a point in space, a point in the plane. That's the difference between 2D and 3D. Now, when we try to represent objects in 3D, we have three coordinate axes. We have the X, the Y, and the Z. Z is always represented as a vertical axis. X is coming out of the page or the screen or the board, and it goes to the left, whereas Y goes to the right. In 3D, we have three coordinate planes. Those are planes that contain two of the three coordinate axes. So for example, the plane that contains the X axis and the Y axis is called the xy plane. It has the equation z equals zero because for every point in that plane the z coordinate is zero. Another coordinate plane is the plane that contains the y axis and the z axis. We call that the yz plane. Its equation is x equals zero. Now here's where we have to be careful when we're working in both 2D and 3D. In 2D, x equals zero would be the equation of a line. But in 3D, x equals zero is a plane. So that is true in general. Other equations like y equals x plus one, that's a line in 2D, but that represents a plane in 3D. And our third coordinate plane then would be the plane containing the x-axis and the z-axis, and we call that the xz plane. It has an equation y equals zero, which again in 2D y equals zero is a line, but in 3D y equals zero represents a plane. Now, another difference is that in 2D, our coordinate axes neatly divide the plane into four subsets that we call quadrants. And we have a well-established way of labeling them. We say the quadrant where X and Y are both positive is quadrant one. And then we go counterclockwise to get the numbering for the other quadrants. Now in 3D, the coordinate planes divide up space into eight octants. 
So you can kind of think of it, there's four above the xy plane and four below the xy plane. However, there's no established convention for numbering them. The only thing that everybody agrees on is that where x, y, and z are all positive, that is called the first octant. It doesn't really make sense to say second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on octants. The only one that everybody agrees on is the first octant. So it can be challenging to try to draw these 3D objects. Um, let's just start with something very simple, like a single point. Uh, we're going to use coordinates 4, 5, and 6. To help us, I'm going to add some grid lines. Let me change the background here to make it a little bit nicer. And let's see if I can move that over. Good. So what would I do? Well, I would start at the origin and then I am going to move four units along the x-axis and then I'll move five units parallel to the y-axis still in the xy plane and then finally I will move six units vertically, so parallel to the z-axis. So four, five, six. And there's my point right here. Now, I, keeping these lines, it, it really helps for to me to know that this is four, five, six. This is the point P with coordinates four, five, six. If I take away those lines, uh, is it really not clear? You know, if I didn't write down the coordinates, I would not really know what the coordinates are of that point. Uh, there's any number of possibilities. So um, it is very challenging. Let's look at a, another point. Here's this blue point. What are its coordinates? Well, I couldn't tell you. But if I give you the coordinates 5, 4, 6, and show you how I got there, I went 5 along the x-axis, 4 parallel to the y-axis, and then straight up six. Now you know what that point is. So let's talk about projections. We will be talking about projections quite a bit in, throughout the course. And so we'll just talk about a projection of a point here. If I take a point P and project it onto a plane, well, the projection of that point will be a point in the plane, but in fact, it will be the point that is closest to the point P. So, for example, if I want to take my point P and project it onto the XY plane, that's going to be the point directly underneath it. So that'd be the point Q with coordinates 0, 4, 6. If I project onto the XZ plane, then I'll go straight over, so parallel to the y-axis, straight over, perpendicular to the uh, XZ plane. The closest point has coordinates 5, 0, 6. So notice the pattern here, right? If we're going to project onto the XY plane, well, we know that Z equals 0. So we just keep the other two coordinates and set the um, z coordinate to zero. And oh, did I screw up there? I sure did. Uh, let me fix that. It's not going to be zero four six. It should be five four zero down here. 
All right, I'll have to fix that in the other slides as well. Uh, but I think I got this one right. Yes, that's where the Y coordinate is zero. So good. All right. So, oh, got to fix this one again. No, five, four, zero is correct. Zero is the uh, Z coordinate in the XY plane. Good. So then if we project that onto the uh, y, z plane, then it's the x coordinate that should be zero. So zero, four, six. That was probably what I was thinking about in the previous slide. All right. So let's think about distance now in 3D. And let's just start with a very simple problem. I want to find the distance from the point P to the x axis. So I really mean what is the distance from point P to the closest point on the x-axis? And that's going to be the point five, zero, zero. So I'm gonna get a right triangle and one leg is gonna be six units. The other leg is going to be four units. And so I can use the Pythagorean theorem and calculate the distance from the point P to that point on the x-axis as being radical 52. All right, we could also use the distance formula. The distance formula comes from Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem also holds true in um, 3D. And so I would just uh, take the sum of the squares and uh, of the difference of the coordinates and then take the square root. Now from the distance formula, we could get the equation of a sphere since a sphere is the set of points which are equidistant from a given point, which is our center. And so if I had my center as being um, a point with coordinates a comma b comma c, and I just take any point on the sphere with coordinates x comma y comma z, and if the uh, radius, that's the distance from the center to that point is r, then I'll get this form of the equation. And that just comes from the distance formula. Let's look at another example. So we've got a geometry question here. We want to use this distance formula to determine if these three points are collinear. Now remember, collinear means that they're all on the same line. Well, if they're not on a line, if they don't all lay on the same line, then they form the vertices of a triangle. And in any triangle, if you take the length of the longest side, that is going to be smaller than the sum of the lengths of the other two sides. That's called the triangle inequality for good reason, it comes from triangles. So on the other hand, if they are all on the same line, then we know that the longest side will be the same, exactly the same as the sum of the lengths of the other two line segments. I guess they're not sides now because uh, they're not forming a triangle, but the longest line segment, the length of the longest line segment will be the sum of the lengths of the other two line segments. So that's our strategy. We're going to calculate the distance between each pair of points. That'll be the length of the line segment. And if the longest side is smaller than the sum of the other two, they are not collinear. If it's equal, then they are collinear. So distance of the first one, I'm going from P to Q. 
So my P coordinates are my X sub one, Y sub one, Z sub one, Q coordinates have the two as a subscript. So I'll take a negative three minus a negative one and then square that negative three minus zero, square that and then one minus five and square that difference. And that after doing some arithmetic gives me radical 29. All right, that's my first line segment. Second line segment, PR, I'll calculate its length, again, using the distance formula. And I get radical 116. And 116 uh, factors, it's 4 times 29. And so I can simplify that as being 2 radical 29. And finally, I must have one more line segment, QR. I did PQ, I did PR, now I have to do QR. And again, using the same distance formula, that works out to be radical 261. 261 is divisible by 9. If we remember our number theory, 2 plus 6 plus 1, that equals 9. So this whole thing must be divisible by 9. If I divide it by 9, the other factor is 29. And so this simplifies to have a length of 3 radical 29. That's the longest one. And if I look, that is exactly the sum of the other two. So, and in fact, now I can see that actually it's point P that must be in the middle because QR is the longest, QP is the shortest, PR is the middle length. And so since PQ plus PR is the same as the length of QR, those three points must all be on the same line. All right, in our last example, we're going to use the distance formula again. And we're given three points again, but now we want to check, do these points form the vertices of a right triangle? And if they do, which one of the three uh, is the vertex of the right angle? Well, we're going to rely on the Pythagorean theorem. We know that in the Pythagorean theorem or in a right triangle, the length of the hypotenuse squared has to equal the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So whatever line segment among PQ, QR, and PR is the longest, I need to find its square and compare it to the squares, the sum of the squares of the other two. So I'll need to use the distance formula to find the length of each line segment. So the length of line segment PQ, again from the distance formula, is radical 2. And so P squared is going to be PQ squared is 2. Use the distance formula to calculate the length of the line segment PR and I come up with radical 56. So that length squared is 56. And now I'm left with QR using the distance formula. I'll get radical 54. So the length of QR squared is going to be 54. So I can see that the longest side is PR, and the square of the longest side is the sum of the square of the lengths of the other two sides. And so we must have a right triangle. Now, I want to find the vertex of the right angle. So I'm just going to draw a little triangle here. I know the longest side, the hypotenuse, is radical 56. The shortest side is radical 2, and the middle side is radical 54. So um, 
the radical two must be uh, the PQ. So one of these is P and the other one is Q. But radical 56 is PR. So the, what they have in common is this top angle. That must be P, meaning that the right angle has to be Q. Now, I really didn't need to draw the triangle. If I know that PR is the hypotenuse, then the right angle has to be opposite the hypotenuse. So I could have just used that and said, oh yeah, if PR is the hypotenuse, Q must be the right triangle. But it's nice to draw the triangle. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video on the 3D coordinate system. We will be working in 3D throughout this course. So might as well get used to it.